good afternoon. Um, my name is Jan de Moedloze. Uh, I'm working with a company called Geospark. And uh, we have uh, an open source product which is called uh, GeoMaya, or GeoMajas, or GeoMajas. <laughs> You just can uh, choose the pronunciation that you want. Um, I will give you a short introduction to Geomaya today. Um, I realize that my slides are a bit old school compared to my course, that's okay. Uh, today's menu is what is Geomaya? What is the, the product? Uh, I will show you some code samples um, and I will. Uh, if time permits, I will maybe talk a little bit about security, but uh, since this is a Sunday afternoon, I don't know if people are ready for that. Um, I will give a quick demo and I will uh, let you fire up some questions. So, uh, what is Geomaya? Uh, Geomaya is basically something we started uh, well, mm, at least five years ago now. And uh, it's an open source platform. Um, at the time when we started it, there was no such thing as, for instance, open layers. Uh, there was a uh, geo server, um, but there was not really a framework or something that you could call uh, a framework for uh, web applications uh, or web map ac applications, let's say. Uh, so what we did is uh, we made our own and. Um, we decided to take some technologies like uh, first it was Dojo, now it's uh, GWT uh, or GWT, and combine that with uh, a Java backend. Um, because mainly we are Java developers. Um, we know there exists something like uh, JavaScript, but uh, we have not yet uh, learned to embrace it like the rest of the world. <laughs> so we like to, uh, well, make stable and testable software and at that time Java was one of the be better options. So what is it? It is a collection of uh, free and open source GIS libraries. Uh, it's uh, basically all you need to build a GIS application uh, without leaving your Eclipse IDE, let's say. Uh, what does it provide? Uh, it provides uh, client and server libraries. Uh, so it has a server side. The server side is pretty common. It's, it's based on the layer concept, just like uh, well, we are actually using Vue too for part of that. Um, and it has uh, an additional uh, feature, which is the built-in security. Uh, so we have uh, very fine-grained security as opposed to, for instance, other products which have only layer level security. Uh, so the language is uh, GWT uh, or GWT on the client side and on the server side is Java. So basically it's Java. Uh, and we have lots of plugins. Uh, this is just a, uh, an overall view of the library. So you have the client, you have the server. Um, you can actually just use the client as a standalone uh, client. Uh, in that case, you would connect to a geospatial server like uh, GeoServer, uh, a WMS or a, a WFS. Um, and then it's pretty much comparable to what you have with the Google Maps API or what you would have with an open layers client. Uh, but you could also connect to the GeoMaya server, in which case you would use the GWT RTC protocol and uh, you would be in a client server setup which is basically just moving the client to the server in terms of OGC services. So you, you, you talk to the same OGC services, but you are doing that on the server side. Um, Technology-wise, so I already said it, we have GWT, we have Java, we use Spring a lot on the backend. It's called uh, Spring and Beam-based. Uh, we use GeoTools, uh, JTS, of course, uh, and Hibernate Spatial. Uh, which is actually also a, a, a spin-off project of ours, uh, as we were already using Hibernate, and we decided to add the spatial component to that. Um, 
So there are some technical examples which I will not show you right now because that would take too much time. But uh, one that really hits the eye is, for instance, you can do polygon splitting and you can just uh, uh, edit a line and use that to split up a polygon. In this case, the country it of Italy. Uh, so it's not just showing data, it's, it's also working with the data, editing, stuff like that. Uh, oops, just a short First view of the uh, client side. Uh, on the client side, we have the blue uh, blocks, which are just using the standard services directly from the client, and we have the orange or reddish block blocks, which uh, are directly talking to the GeoMaya server. Um, on top of that, we have some really specific plugins, like the editing plugin. Uh, which is used for editing geometry. Um, and we have several widget plugins as well uh, for doing things like layer trees and, and stuff like that. Um, now, since this is a developer audience, I thought I would just show you a couple of code samples uh, just to get to, to grips with what it is like coding with GeoMaya. Um, first thing is creating a map. Uh, this is not very different from what you would do with uh, an open layers map, I think. Uh, you just start by creating a map configuration. Um, you just uh, uh, choose this particular reference system, the CRS. You set the maximum bounds of the map and you set uh, a series of uh, levels on the map. And series of, of resolutions. Then you create this uh, map presenter uh, object, and then you simply add that map presenter as widget to the rest of your layout. So that's like 10 lines of code creating a map. Um, could be shorter if you use less resolutions or if you use a predefined set of resolutions. Adding layers. Um, so for each type of layer, we have uh, a particular client uh, instance. So in this case, it's the TMS client. So you get that as a single thing. It's a, a get instance uh, call. And you pass it a URL to a TMS server. Um, in this case, uh, the URL actually is on a different server. So you have to do some copying on the server side. Um, this is using uh, an asynchronous interface. So you will receive a call back uh, with the various, uh, well, in this case, the single layer that you have asked for. And then you just call the get layers model on the map and you add your layer. Um, and in this case, it will also set it to animated, which means it, it, it will animate on zoom in. Same case for WMS. Um, so in this case, we also define a tile configuration. We define a base URL, uh, a format, a version of the WMS, and we add the layer name, so the type name in the WMS. And we use, in this case, the WMS client, get instance, and create the layer and add it to the map. And third uh, sample is a server side layer. In this case, um, it's actually, actually it's easier because what you do here is you take the GeoMaya server extension, you get the instance and you initialize a map. And uh, you will pass it 
a reference to a map which is actually defined on the server. So on the server side, you will have your complete map defined in XML, uh, which saves you from having to define the different layers uh, on the client side in JavaScript or uh, here. Um, I will show you uh, if you will uh, if not uh, well, it's rather word over so it's like most XML. Uh, but this is actually the beam, the, the string beam that defines the, the map on the server side. Uh, and as you can see here, it has four layers in this case. So you can define whatever layer type over there on, on, the, uh, on the server side and, and you can uh, decide which layers are visible and that kind of thing. Initial bounds, uh, selection style uh, and so on. Um, so this is basically the easy stuff, let's say, creating your map, cre adding the layers. Uh, I'm going to, well, oh this is uh, a more complex example, which is a map controller. What are map controllers? Uh, map controllers are just uh, Java classes uh, which, which uh, are used to do something on the map. So you receive user events in your map controller and you will, uh, for instance, use that to navigate the map in, uh, in case you are just driving, for instance. Or, or you will, will use it to edit uh, a geometric uh, object on the map or features. Um, in this case, I've made it a bit more complex by combining two controllers. Um, we have something which is called the abstract rectangle controller. That's the controller which will allow you to drag a rectangle and do something with it. So in this case, it will draw the rectangle, uh, or the user will draw the rectangle, and it will be used to start an editing service uh, by calling this set geometry method, and the editing service will start editing the rectangle. And I will show you, you later on how this actually looks like uh, in real life, in the demo. Uh, so it's, it's basically combining the power of the uh, app, the rectangle controller and the editing controller to start creating uh, a geographic uh, shaped object. Um, the server side is uh, looks rather complicated here, but it's not really that complicated. <laughs> um, it's command based, uh, so we are uh, using the command pattern, uh, which means that every communication happens by sending a request, which is then processed by a command beam on the server side. Uh, we have various layer services, of course, for the layers on the map. We have uh, both vector and raster layer services, uh, and we have whatever custom services that uh, one likes to implement. Uh, so a, m a usual GeoMyos application uh, has a lot of custom uh, commands as well because uh, different applications need different uh, re has different requirements, of course. And uh, yeah, it, it uh, has to be incorporated in the general command system. Um, we have uh, a rather complex uh, possibility of uh, supporting domain models in the sense that well, it's not complex, it's more that we, we, we uh, have uh, tried to combine both what people are usually, non-GIS people using, which is Hibernate, with the concept of layers in, in GIS. So that means that you can just write your Kojo object, mm, your, your Java object, and then you can, uh, you can expose that as a layer in, in GeoMyos. This is what we call the Hibernate layer. And the good thing about that is that you can also support associations uh, like uh, one to one or one to many. Uh, and still keep using your uh, standard Hibernate stuff on, on the server side. Uh, besides that, you can also make custom layers. So uh, it's very simple to implement a layer which is, for instance, based on some exotic REST services that you know of, and that can 
be used to, to retrieve spatial data. Uh, what you have to do there is to just create an implementation of the vector layer interface. And uh, that means, well, if you know geo tools, it's a bit like a data store. So, so you have to implement uh, stuff to create uh, features, save or update features. And, and the basic, the blue thing here is, is just the read step, so getting elements out of it. So, uh, uh, so it's fairly easy to implement a layer based on some other uh, web service. Because you are in d in some cases working with with generic Java obje objects, you will also have to implement a feature model in that case. So that will allow you to uh, define in a custom way how, for instance, you get the geometry out of the object. So in the simple case, it's just a layer uh <coughs> implementation. In the more complex case, you have a layer and a feature implementation that you need to implement. Okay, uh, the spring stuff is, uh, well, we, we like to use spring as much as possible. And one interesting uh, example that I can give you is the fact that we use it to create a pipeline in the backend. Uh, pipeline consisting of uh, several pipeline steps. Uh, and each of these steps can be used to do a dedicated uh, task. For instance, you can have a pipeline step that uh, applies a filter or prepares a filter, uh, a pipeline step that fetches the data, a pipeline that, uh, that uh, creates the style. And that makes it easy to, to modify your layers. So if you say, my geometries are too complex or I want to merge them in bigger geometries, you just add an extra step to it, which is uh, a simplifying step, for instance. It takes a lot of features and, and, and groups them together to another feature, which is something that uh, you could also do on the client in some cases, of course, but that depends on, on the size of your data and your complexity. Uh, another thing is, uh, yeah, we can uh, <coughs> add a security here. So what we did is add our, cu our custom security uh, in the pipeline uh, to do some checking on whether people are allowed to see features or not, for instance. Um, and that brings me to the security part, uh, which is probably something I'd rather skip now because it doesn't add too much. Uh, I will summarize in terms of uh, what it, it does. It, it, it provides uh, a way to split off authentication and authorization. Authentication, you can do it the spring way or you can do it uh, through different systems, whatever authentication system you'd like to use. And Based on that, we create a security context in, in Spring, which is just an auto-wired object which knows what uh, kind of policies the users have, wha what it you can do and what you can't do. Um, and just to show you some sample code on this, or a sample of how fine-grained it is, uh, this is actually a feature authorization interface, um, and it will Depending on the feature, it will decide whether it should be visible to the user, the end user, or whether it should be updatable, deletable, and that kind of thing. So by implementing this in your own way, you can uh, configure whatever kinds of security you want on the feature level. Okay, that brings me to a short demo.
this much of anything else. Well, it's, uh, yeah, okay, anyway. So, this is basically an application. Um, it's a, a portal. It, it if you could see this, <laughs> you would be able to see that this is a uh, the upper part of Belgium, uh, also called Flanders. Belgium is complicated, so. Uh, but th this uh, application is just uh, um, showing the, the subterranean uh, layers of the Belgian soil, basically. Uh, so it's called the Bodemvertemmer, which means the soil explorer or, or something like that. And. Um, the way it works is that you can uh, add layers from different trees of layers. So we have different WMS servers uh, out there which you can add from which you can add layers to, to the map. Uh, so I will just, for instance, add this one, which is called historic. Oops, uh, it's called historic uh, soil profile. And um, it's a just a set of, uh, well, <coughs> uh, they've done various drillings in, in the soil, uh, the whole of Flanders, and they have uh, made profiles based on that uh, type of drilling. Um, now, what I was going to show you is the special controller I was talking about, and that's this controller here. So what you can do is you just draw a rectangle and as you can see, immediately when I, f when I finish drawing the rectangle, uh, a request is going to the server. It will actually go to all servers for which there is a layer in this map. And it will return the data which is within the rectangle. Uh, so, and the user has the option to change this rectangle by adding points. And in real time, the filter will change and it will fetch new data uh, based on the new uh, geometry. Uh, so, and this this is basically uh, well, what this application is all about. You can show labels, for instance, here. You can change the transparency. You can show a legend. Um, Actually, all the stuff you kind of use when, when you use other uh, map tools. But uh, in this case, it's, it's all based on, on Java and, and uh, VWC, of course. Um, so I think that more or less concludes my talk here. Are there any questions? So if you are interested in, in uh, well, checking it out or, or working it, just go to geomyos.org and have a look at it. Um, this is not on, this is not for the free software, but there are applications that you can download which uh, show you similar stuff.